I'll try to be as brief as I can here, but I think what's important is that we put what's happening in, in Gaza into some wider context. And to do that, there's a couple of other areas we'll have to cover. For if one were to view the events in Gaza over the past couple of weeks out of context, one could be forgiven for thinking that the events began with a Qassam rocket attack upon Israel. The starting point was the resistance, and Israel's actions were merely a response to it. This is, after all, how Israel and its allies in the Western media have framed it. However, even a cursory analysis of the situation would reveal that the Qassam rocket attacks are a reaction to the illegal occupation of Palestine. First comes the occupation, and then comes the resistance. It simply doesn't happen the other way around. This latest attack on the people of Gaza has left more than 120 people dead, of whom one in five were children, and over half were civilians. And whilst these attacks are horrendous, it would be a mistake for anyone here to view them as anything but standard fare in that part of the world. In fact, it would be a mistake to view this wanton slaughter of innocents as being in any way unique or out of the ordinary. For the state of Israel has threatened worse, and has indeed done worse. Just the other week, Israel's Deputy Defense Minister threatened the Palestinian people with a Shoah. A Shoah is a Holocaust. Shoah is a term that is rarely used, except when referring to the Holocaust carried out by the Nazis. In an attempt at damage limitation, various figures of authority in Israel have assured the world that our translation is inaccurate that the Palestinian people haven't been threatened with a holocaust, but merely a calamity or a disaster. Whatever it translates as, what it threatens the Palestinian people with is genocide. In a piece titled Each Deeds of Genocide, Greg Stanton, of the president of Genocide Watch, sets out a number of warning signs of an impending genocide, including the dehumanization of victims groups and preparation whereby potential victims are often segregated into ghettos or confined to a famine-struck region and starve. Whilst this may seem improbable in the case of Palestine, and of Gaza in particular, we would do well to reflect on the current conditions in Gaza, which are entirely man-made conditions. The population of Gaza has been herded into and confined to the most densely populated area on earth. Israel has peddled the myth that it withdrew from Gaza and therefore cannot be viewed as an occupying force. Yet, through its control of the land borders, the airspace, and the coastline of Gaza, it has turned it into one of the largest open air prisons in the world. Agencies such as Amnesty International, Christian Aid, and Oxfam have warned how aid dependency in Gaza has risen sharply. In 1999, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees provided food to some 16,000 families in the enclave. That figure now stands at a shocking 1.1 million. 1.1 million out of a total population of 1.3 million are dependent on food aid, which the International Committee of the Red Cross describes as not en enough to survive, not enough to live. In the absence of this meager aid, the people would die. Now review their reluctance to declare what is happening in Palestine as genocide. We have an enclave dehumanized and declared as an enemy entity who are confined to a ghetto and slowly starve. Given these realities, it may be entirely more appropriate to declare that the threat of impending genocide is irrelevant. Irrelevant because the genocide has already begun. But again, this is not unique in Palestine. Over 60 years ago, the Palestinian people suffered the Nakba, which is Arabic for the catastrophe. Upon illegally declaring the State of Israel on May 14, 1948, 750,000 Palestinian people were assigned the role of refugee. Through a mixture of mayhem, massacre and expulsion, 750,000 Palestinians were driven from their homes and villages in what a prominent Israeli historian, Elan Pape, describes as an ethnic cleansing. Despite a UN General Assembly resolution resolving that the Palestinian refugees wishing to return to their homes should be permitted to do so at the earliest practical date, 60 years on, Israel still forbids Palestinians to do so. 60 years on, the Palestinian refugees, now 4 million in all, some two-thirds of the Palestinian population, remain dis dispossessed and dislocated. On the 60th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the rights enshrined in them, the rate of return for the Palestinian people remains unfulfilled. The Zionists stand condemned, condemned to flout the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, of contravening the, Gen the Geneva Convention, and defying over 30 UN Security Council resolutions. It surely deserves its title of being a rogue state. Obtaining a 
right and first that there is a duty upon someone to recognise that right. There is a duty upon someone to defend and uphold that right. And as the elites in the international community have abjectly failed in defending the rights of the Palestinian people, and as they have ab absolutely refused to uphold the rights of the people in Iraq, it falls to us to ensure that these rights are obtained. It falls to the people gathered here today and to the other progressives gathered across the globe to ensure that people get what is due to them. It falls to us to declare that we'll continue to protest, that we'll continue to agitate until the occupation of Iraq is ended and the people of Palestine are free. It falls to us to declare that we'll come here every bloody year until what is right is done and those who are wrong are gone. Thank you very much.